he was only four foot ten inches tall, over seventy years of age, and somewhat resembled a garden gnome. But don't be fooled, Harry the Hunchback Riccobini was as hard as a coffin nail. Welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed snapshots of the American Mafia and other organised crime. If this is a subject you enjoy, please feel free to like the video and hit the subscribe button for notifications of my future episodes. Today, we're going to be talking about the Scarfo Riccobini War, and specifically, the hunt for the hunchback. In 1981, Philadelphia Cotton Ostra boss Philip Tester was torn apart by a nail bomb detonated by Rocco Marinucci at the behest of Chicky Narducci and Pete Casella. The ruthless and cunning Genovese family then placed their ally and friend, Nicky Scarfo, in the vacant leadership position. Scarfo was a gangster's gangster, but he was never a large earner. And there was an old adage which says, never elevate a poor man to the position of boss. Nicky Scarfo was now in charge, and he set about making sure everyone knew it. This included moving in on long-term family member Harry the Hunchback Rick of Beans, gambling operations, and also demanding a regular percentage of his earnings. The latter demand wouldn't seem unreasonable in the Costa Nostra family. In fact, it was standard protocol. However, the Hunchback for many years has had an agreement with former long-term boss Angelo Bruno, where he only paid tribute at Christmas. In the meantime, he was allowed to operate pretty much independently, and with a small army of men around him, including several relatives, he had essentially a family within a family. Riccobini, the miniature Santa Claus lookalike, rejected Scarfo's demands, sending little Nicky crazy. But Harry couldn't care less. After all, he was from the proper old school, from the time before the commission was even born. Riccobini had been a Cosa Nostra prodigy, allegedly being made into the family by Prohibition-era boss Salvatore Sabela when he was just 17. Some sources say 16. Harry Riccobini was a rising power within the Philadelphia family until his career was stalled in the early 1950s when he received a lengthy prison sentence for heroin trafficking. In 1963, after serving around half his sentence, Riccobini heard that the Pennsylvania Pardons Board had voted against commuting his sentence, despite Angelo Bruno's efforts with his political connections. Riccobini would have to see out the remaining 10 plus years of his sentence. Allegedly, this left Riccobini rather jaded. And in the early 1960s, he started talking to the FBI from behind bars. He told the feds all about the structures of the Cosa Nostra families, very much like Greg Scarpa and Valachi had done. He also filled in blanks regarding historical information on the Philadelphia family, apparently telling them that he was surprised that Angelo Bruno had been elevated to the position of boss, as he'd only fairly recently been inducted into the family. According to the records, the information that he provided dried up around 1964, and by 1968, he only had limited contact with the feds. He was finally released in 1975 and went straight back to work. So, back to the furious Nicky Scarfo. After Riccobini had essentially given him the middle finger, Nicky, unsurprisingly, wanted the hunchback dead. Nicky Scarfo first attempted, through long-term soldier Raymond Long John Martirano, to have Jimmy Gregorio, a pagan motorcycle member, to kill Riccobini for $20,000. Gregorio, however, gets greedy, and he approaches Riccobini and tries to shake Harry down in order not to kill him. Why don't you go kill Longy instead? Riccobini tells him. The enormous Gregorio picks up Harry by his lapels, lifting him clear of the ground. I can kill you right now, you little ass bag. Bit of, bit of a strange insult. Riccobini, unfazed, coolly replies... Nah, nah, you go kill Longy, then you come back. We'll talk about it then. The confused and shocked Gregorio releases Harry's lapels and leaves, bemused at Harry's calmness. Gregorio didn't actually kill anyone, and turns out he was actually a government witness. Next up, two of Salvi Tester's crew, Joe, Joey Punch, Punchiatore, and Salvatore Wayne Grande, find Riccobini at a payphone. On June 8th, 1982, Riccobini, the elderly diminutive Lothario, was talking to his 23-year-old girlfriend. Go on, Harry. Grande charges at the booth, firing repeatedly. Five bullets tear into Riccobini's tiny frame. 
But surprisingly, the hard as nails mobster wasn't done. Riddled with bullets, he rushes at his attacker and manages to wrestle the gun from Grande, a man 40 years his junior. Grande, shocked, jumps in the waiting car driven by Joey Punch. The police later find Riccobini propped up bleeding against the phone box with an empty revolver in his hand. Later, when he was asked how he managed to get the gun off his attacker, he replied, he was done with it. A final attempt was made on August the 21st that year. Harry the Hunchback was sat at some traffic lights when a jogger ran past and emptied an entire gun into the vehicle. Despite being cut from shattered glass, all the bullets missed. The war would continue. If you found any of that interesting, guys, please feel free to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe for notifications of my future videos. Thanks all for watching.